Hello, this is Professor Michael. I am going to go through the additional exercise um, for week 13 so that people can get started on it. Um, I've had a lot of questions about it. Um, the, the first priority this week is to complete chapter seven exercises. So if you understand those, you're doing well. Um, but in the next two weeks, the last two weeks of class, we're going to be putting everything together. Um, and I have several um, exercises that I will lead you through that are going to be similar to this additional exercise. Um, so I'd like for you to attempt it and uh, see what you can figure out. You should uh, encounter a few problems and work through them so that you can really understand data types, uh, why you would have to alter a table, how you can use functions uh, to get the results that you want, um, and uh, oh, really work on your um, querying skills. So I'm going to open up SQL Server Management Studio and here um, I just copied in the uh, information about the assignment. Um, I'm using the AP database and this is the AP database after you complete all of the exercises in chapter 7. So make sure you do that otherwise um, you may not have the the tables that you need um, or the table that you need and the data that you need. Uh, so using AP and if I have this use statement here just as a review and I highlight it and, and run something, it will populate this box. This tells you what current database you're working in. Uh, you can also select it uh, if you want, but make sure you're in the right database. So if I look at the invoice copy table, I can see the invoice total column. Uh, this is the column that I'm interested in. And I had a couple of questions about uh, why why do you only want it um, padded with uh, zeros uh, if it's three digits or less uh, for the whole number uh, because this column gets a little bigger um, so if you want to know how how large the invoice total column gets you can do a max so select max invoice oops invoice total from invoice copy. Alright, so that's the largest number here and you'll notice that it is one, two, three, four, five digits uh, left of the decimal point so the the whole number portion is five digits. So at the at the end of this you're going to have some uh, whole numbers that are five digits and some that are, are four. But you shouldn't have any that are less than four because you're going to left pad that um, so that you, you get a result that is at least four digits. So sorry if that was confusing. Um, all right, so, so when I get started on this, I, I have to figure out, one, um, how, how do I know which numbers I want to deal with because I don't want the ones that are four and five digits for a whole number I just want the whole number where it's three digits or less um, so I, I look up the different functions and and we went through some functions in the book uh, length is a function this len and if you hover over it or if you type it, it says it's a built-in function length it takes an expression uh, of type bar car and we'll return an int by by default here. Um, so let's say that I just try this. I don't get anything. Um, so if you look up length, you'll notice that uh, it, I don't have the correct data type for length. Um, if you look at the table, <coughs> sorry, if you look at the table, Look at the data type for invoice total. Oops, sorry. It's money. So I have to figure out how to deal with money. Um, and and so one way that you can do that is by looking in your book. Um, and you can go to SQL Server. Uh, you can just Google it. Um, You can find so much information online uh, in the MSDN library. So this tells me all about money. 
And it talks about converting the money data type. Uh, you can convert it to a varchar, convert it as a decimal. Um, and, and you'll notice that if you convert it as a varchar, you can keep the decimal. If you convert it as a, as a decimal with no precision, you don't keep um, that, uh, that decimal point. Uh, so you can read about that. You can also read about casting, so let's just Google it, right? Cast money SQL Server. And so this goes into casting and converting, which are built-in functions. And you can take a look down towards the bottom here. And they've got a whole chart of what you might convert from and what you would convert to. So we're converting from money. And so you can see at the bottom these little gray boxes say it's an implicit conversion. So it would already happen versus an explicit conversion. Um, and the white conversion not allowed. Uh, so for example, you can't convert money to time. That just doesn't make sense, right? Um, so, so what you would want to do is play a, play around with casting and converting uh, money and, and see what you come up with. Um, so if I cast money to an int, here I have 435 um, for this first column. And if I want to know, that first column isn't always the same. You'll notice that normally it is here. Um, but if I want to know explicitly what that is, let's say, uh, let's do a select star again. Show you how you might do this. So let's go with invoice ID equal to 115. Right? So invoice ID equal to 115. So we have just one record that we're working with here. With here. Uh, so that's 115. If I select star from invoice copy not doing um, anything, or rather select invoice total uh, from invoice copy. Not doing any conversion. Sorry about my dog. So here I get 434.58, but when I convert it to an int, I get 435. And that's because of uh, rounding that happens when you convert money to an int. Uh, and, and you can look that up as well. And we don't want that. Um, we don't want to convert it uh, such that it rounds it up um, to the next value. So we want to keep it 434, um, but we want it, we want to get those digits to the left of this decimal point. Uh, so so let's try converting it to a decimal. Let's see what happens. And I'm doing a decimal with 10 digits to the left, which is over what I need, um, and then two digits to the right because it's money. I should only have um, a tens and a hundreds place. So here, when I convert it from a decimal, I get the same thing. So that's good. At least it's not converting it, um, or rounding it, rather. But I still have this decimal point. So I can't get the length here um, because it will take the length of the entire uh, string if I convert it to a string. So I still want to get just the uh, numbers to the left of the decimal point. And we know we can do that with int here, but it rounds it. So if we first convert it to a decimal, and then we put those together and convert it to a decimal and then convert it to an int, I get exactly what I want, which is 434, just the value to the left of the decimal. So if you can see how I put this statement and this statement together in this, so I have two casts. So the first one uh, cast as a decimal, and the second one cast as an int. Uh, that way I'm not getting the rounding. So now I should be able to do the length, which is up here, 
on just the whole number portion of my money data type. So here I've got length and I've got these two casts and I'm saying where it's less than four because I want it to be three digits or less. So I'm just selecting everything. So here I get those. And so I'm not uh, doing any casting or converting on the, the data that I'm getting. I'm putting it into the where clause so that I only get the records that I need. And I have 88 rows. And the, the total number of rows in the table is 115. So there's several that are four digits as a whole number and five digits as a whole number. And I don't want want to deal with those. So now that I have the data that I need to manipulate, because uh, eventually I'm going to update this column, now I have to figure out how can I append a zero to the left hand side of this number so that I have four digits in every whole number. So for this one, 43458, I would want to have 0434.58. Here, instead of 40.20, I would want to have 0040.20, so on and so forth. So how do I do that? So one thing that I can do is this write function, and here I'll hover over it, built-in function, uh, write accepts an expression uh, of a varchar, an expression of an int, and returns a varchar. So here I'm saying I want a zero, and this is a string zero, plus I want my value as a varchar. If you can see that. So I'm casting my invoice total as a decimal like I am above. And then I'm casting it as a varchar because I need it to be a character in order to append this character. And then if you hover over right, This is how many digits will be returned. Uh, so I just made it huge just for this example, uh, saying 20. Um, so, so what I want to do is I want to append one zero up to 20 characters, right? Where, and so my where clause is pretty much the same as above, except instead of m less than four, I said equal to three. And that way I know I can just append one zero. Now this would be the first thing that I would do because I want to see how this works. Um, but this obviously can be um, changed so that I don't have to do four different statements here. I could have less than four. I could figure out how to only append zeros. Um, but this is also giving me a, a character instead of money. Right, because this write function requires a bar car, so I'm converting it, and I'm not converting it back to money. Um, but this will give me that result that I want where the whole number is equal to three. So this gives me 40 rows here. And that's the, the first step to figuring out how to update it, is, is learning how to get the exact results that you want. And then this one, this is where it's equal to two, so I should append two zeros. Right now it's two uh, character zeros, because this is again returning a character. And then this one would be three. Don't have very many of those. And then this one has no results. In the case where there is no length of string. So I can get rid of that one. At least I don't have to worry about that. So these three will give me the, the results that I want for an update, except the data type is not right. So after you get to this point, now what you need to do is figure out how to make this a money data type. Um, but this is going to cause you some problems because you want to update this column that is defined as a money data type. And you want to left pad those numbers with, with zeros. Now you can left pad a variable character 
and you can do it with some other data types. But what you need to do a little research on is can you left pad the money data type? If you can't, you would have to alter the table and change this invoice total data type. Or, uh, and, and that may cause you some problems with some of the calculations, um, but, but that's a possibility. And so then you'll have to look into alter table data type when you have data in a table. Uh, or you can figure out how to update the table with a, uh, a leading zero for a money data type. So that is something to look up. Um, but I'd like for you to get to this point so that you can see as you go through it, you realize all of the the nuances with data types um, and run into things like, oh, it, it rounds it, you know, something that you might not expect. Um, and then with casting and converting, also try um, convert here. Um, casting and converting, you'll run into some kind of strange things that you wouldn't realize just by reading about it. Um, you need to practice through these things. So whatever you get to, um, whatever point you get to, I would like for you to submit it with the exercise seven um, assignment so that I can read through those and, and kind of see what your thought process is. And then I will post uh, the assignment for the next two weeks um, by tomorrow, end of day, so that you can work through those. Uh, those will not be uh, book assignments. We have uh, gone through all of the book assignments that, that we'll go through. Now we need to put it all together and do a few uh, custom exercises that that I have that I will start start you off with. Alright, let me know if you have any questions.